So it was Tony Blair who brought private health care into the NHS, leading to some 5 million NHS patients receiving treatment in either private hospitals or through private health care companies. And the Telegraph yesterday was getting very excited uh, about a plan to massively expand the NHS's reliance on private hospitals with essentially a billion pounds worth of health care being provided by the independent sector, uh, the funding essentially the biggest expansion in health care since Sir Tony Blair's premiership. Of course, as soon as I see private hospitals getting involved in the NHS and a, a billion pounds of care being offered to to patients like you and me, I just wonder how much of it's been taken out in profit because that's how private healthcare companies work. And if the NHS is skint, do we really want to see money, precious pounds of, of, of your money and my money disappearing into the hands of, of, of wealthy private companies? Well, Dr John Lister is health policy academic at Keep Our NHS Public, so I'm pretty sure uh, we know which angle he's going to be coming at on this. Good morning to you, Dr John. Um, Good morning. Before we get on to the, the Telegraph's expansion of the private sector within the NHS, what, 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 is, what is your analysis of the role of private health care in the NHS since Tony Blair's days? Uh, well, it's, it's the, the private sector, we need to remember the private sector is basically small hospitals and, and, and clinics that have been set up in the, in the last uh, 20, 20 years or so. And so it's always had very limited capacity as to what it could take. One of the reasons they don't take more off the NHS waiting list and, uh, it is because they, they can't handle more complex cases. And it looks like this Telegraph uh, story seems to be looking at them investing in things like ITU uh, facilities to be built into private hospitals. It seems like they're going to spend a lot of money up front and, and promising to do that, which, of course, is exactly what the NHS has been crying out for the same similar sums and rather larger sums to be invested in the NHS to enable it to do the whole thing within the NHS rather than contract the work out to private providers. You see, that, they, you see you, you brought it right round to, to where, where my thinking is, is if we've got the money or if there is the, the potential value around it in, in the price, is, is that the problem that we're not actually talking about taxpayers' money here, we're talking about the private healthcare sector offering up facilities or developing facilities at their cost, which we then will pay for through the NHS? And, 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 as you were saying, and more, because and more. obviously they're not going to be investing that money unless there's a real prospect and a guarantee, I would say, because a billion pounds is a lot of money for the private sector to invest. It's not all that big a sector. So if they're going to be investing that money up front, then they're going to be expecting years and years of commitment to the NHS to send larger numbers of patients to them for treatment. And, of course, it means the NHS would then be permanently dependent on the, on the private sector for that level of treatment. It's a, it's a long-term a further privatisation of the provision of care in, in, in our health service. And it really means that the NHS, with ev even less resources and, and probably less staff, because I don't believe the claim that they can do this without taking any further NHS staff to do the work, even less staff still has to deal with all the emergencies, all the maternity cases, all the most serious and complex cases, will still remain with the NHS, but with less resources to do it. Because I, I, I must be very naive, because I'm thinking, if, if a private hospital, say, d does move into emergency care and such like, and they can generate a profit out of it and everything else, how come we can't make it work in the NHS? Well, they're not proposing to move into emergency care. They're entirely focused on uh, on elective care. All the emergency care in this country, we'll everything, NHS. is done by the NHS. No, no, other than the most trivial walk-in cases in some of these rather ridiculous outfits that have been set up by the private sector that basically give you an X-ray you didn't need and a paracetamol and send you away for a hundred quid. I mean, we, I mean that's the, their notion of, of of private emergency provision. Anything serious. As an emergency is done by the NHS, and we'd have less resources left in the NHS to do that, while the private sector, of course, coins in the money doing the, the simple elective stuff. How, how can it be fixed, John? I, I, I mean, I, even before the election, I was reading profiles and documents from former advisors to Tony Blair, healthcare experts, all saying that the, that the chair of the, the Royal Institute of Surgeons, that they're all saying there's not enough money being pledged to deliver the increase in services that West Streeting has, has been promising, that the public want. There's just not enough money being put aside. There's not enough money for staffing and such like. All, the, all these clear warnings fired across the health Secretary's sort of bows in the run-up to the election. 
Mm. Uh, uh, how does it get fixed? I mean, if, if the money is not there. I mean, I'm assuming that he's looking at this as a sort of a billion pound kind of freebie from the private sector that we, the taxpayer, don't have to pay for this, although we will pay for it in the end. Well, we don't get told that there's not enough money to uh, support the war in Ukraine or other things which the government has politically prioritised. So I don't see why there's not enough money available to put some investment into the NHS to stop some of the buildings falling down, uh, to uh, in enable them to build the additional diagnostic capacity they need to actually tackle the, the waiting list and actually get that moving. At the moment, it's been stuck on 7.6 million uh, for a long time, and it seems set to remain that way uh, as, as long as the NHS doesn't actually build its own core capacity to deal with the level of demand that has grown over the years. And, you know, it's, it, I, I can't understand a government that's prepared to spend a, 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 an undisclosed, because it'd be well beyond a billion pounds you'd wind up having to pay for this, but well beyond a billion pounds and expanding the private sector, while you've got NHS hospitals literally, in some cases, falling down uh, and, and unable to operate properly because of a lack of investment. This is completely top Turvy, and I'm sure it's not what anybody voted for when they were uh, voting for change at the last election and giving them a huge majority to do more or less exactly what they like. And if that's what they like, then it's not at all what the electorate want. If, if you are wrong, and, and, and I am wrong, and this approach does lead to millions of people coming off an NHS waiting list, would we then would would, would, you, would you acknowledge that this maybe that that West Streeting was right to go down this route? I mean, we're, we're sort of poo pooing it before we've given it a chance. Although I would say that we've already seen the private sector operating within the NHS, and we've been seeing it for more than twenty years. Well, I mean, it's like PFI, only worse in the sense that the end of PFI, how extortionate that was, the using private money to build hospitals, is winding up costing some, you know, an extraordinary extra amount on top of what it would have cost to do it properly uh, through uh, public funding. But at least at the end of the day, with PFI, you do wind up with a hospital. Whereas with this, it's a, a billion pounds which the private sector puts up. And then you're dependent for the rest of time to actually send large numbers of NHS patients to, to the private sector. This is a lose-lose for the NHS. And it's, it's hard to see how anybody can really regard it. it is a, let's, let's admit it's a private sector scheme floated in the Telegraph. Let's hope Labour do have some sense of proportion and, and, and understand that this is not something that will resolve the problems in the NHS. It won't take a single person off the queues of ambulances waiting to get into A&E during winter. It won't solve any of the long-term problems of the, of the waiting list. It will put a few more quid into the pockets of some private sector investors and leave the bulk of the NHS still struggling to survive. Dr John Lister, thanks very much for giving up your time uh, this uh, Saturday morning. John there is from Keep Our NHS Public, as if that wasn't clear enough.